Well, are you ready for the word? Well, let's go straight to the word. Uh, let's go to our anchor. Well, the anchor scripture for this brand new teaching is in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, and we're reading verse number 4. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 4. Wherever you are, join me in reading it as loud as you can. One, two, go. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Come on, let's read it one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Well, we begin a series of teaching this month that we're tattling the power of prevailing praise. The power of of prevailing praise that verse of scripture in philippians 4 lets us know the command by god for us to rejoice it's a command it's a command for us to rejoice and that word rejoice means to feel or express great joy to feel or express great joy it means to be ecstatic with joy it means to be joyful to be full of joy where you now come and you express it so god is letting us know that this month and every single day of our lives we must rejoice and there's a key word in that word rejoice there's a key word in the meaning of that word rejoice it means to be full of joy to be joyful so for you I would like you to know that joy is an asset for your life. Joy is something that you cannot take for granted. Joy is something that you must choose to partake it because the essence of living a life that is full of rejoicing and of praise is joy. It takes joy to genuinely praise God. I love that verse of scripture in Philippians 4 verse 4 in the Passion Translation. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of your life. Let joy overflow for you are united with the anointed one. Can you see that? It says you should be joyful. You should, be ce- you should, you should celebrate at every season of of your life that's god's word for us in this season for us to be joyful for us to rejoice for us to celebrate for us to engage in prevailing praise even in this season when we do that then everything that he has in store for us will be our experience it's so important because you can fully express your praise when your heart is full of joy you can fully express your praise to god when you are rejoicing in the lord in your heart it takes a heart that is full of joy to truly praise god for who he is when you are engaging in praise you are taking your focus off of what you don't have and you are focusing on the one you do have when you are praising when you engage in prevailing faith uh, praise you are taking your attention off of you know the problems of life and you're looking at the possibilities that can be you are taking your focus off of the hurts and you're focusing on the hope that you have you know your your hopeless situation your hopeless end turns into an endless hope when you are praising you take your focus you know off of the pain and you're able to praise you take your focus off of the anxiety and you're able to focus on the answers that god has in front of you very important you understand that because your focus is so important where prevailing praise is concerned second corinthians chapter 8 verse uh second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 tells us that it says we don't fix our eyes we don't fix our attention on the things that are seen but on the things that are not seen because the things that are seen are temporary but the things that are not seen are eternal those are the things that that help us break through in whatever that we're going through very important and that's what prevailing praise is all about listen to this the shortest way to your breakthroughs unlimited is the way of prevailing praise 
the shortest way to your breakthroughs unlimited to whatever it is that you want God to do in your life it's the way of prevailing praise it's the fastest elevator to win in life It's the fastest ladder you can climb on to get to where you want to be in life very important it gets you quicker to where you want to be than complaining it gets you quicker and faster to where you want to be than murmuring and anybody can murmur anybody can complain however when you're talking about prevailing praise it takes you know a true understanding to do that praise takes understanding prevailing praise requires understanding how do i know that look at what it says in the book of psalm 47 verse 7 He says, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Can you see that? For God is the king of all the earth. It now commands you to sing praise with understanding. Why? It takes understanding for you to truly praise. Anybody can make a noise. Anybody can shout and rejoice. But when we're talking about prevailing praise, it takes, you know, a true understanding of what praise is all about and let's look at that this morning just to encourage us for what God wants to do this month so what is prevailing praise what is prevailing praise look at it prevailing praise is acknowledging God for who he is prevailing praise is acknowledging God for who he is that verse of scripture that we read in Psalm 47 verse 7 it says for God is the king of all the earth so the psalmist here is praising God for him being king of all the earth the essence and the focus of his praise is on who God is he's acknowledging who God is so when we're talking about prevailing praise we're talking about acknowledging God for who he is the implication of that is this if you don't know who he is it'll be very hard for you to engage in prevailing praise look at it again in first chronicles chapter 29 king david gathered you know the whole nation together to praise and to rejoice in god first chronicles 29 from verse 9 the bible says then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the lord and king david also rejoiced greatly verse 10 it says therefore david blessed the lord before all the assembly and david said now he's now he's now praising god for who he is he said blessed are you lord god of israel our father forever and ever yours O lord is the greatness the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours yours is the kingdom O lord and you are exalted as head over all verse 12 he says both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all in your hand is power and might in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all now therefore our god can you see that we thank you and praise your glorious name wow this was a man who got a nation together to acknowledge god for who he is praising god for him being king praising god for being the one who is head praising god for the one who owns all things praising god for who he is here's the implication prevailing praise is impossible if you don't truly have a true relationship with god because it comes out of a relationship not a ritual most people praise god as a ritual they are just they are ritualistic in their approach in what you know in in praising god when you do that you're just an echo when you do that you know and that's what a lot of people do a lot of people just echo what other people say about god but when we're talking about prevailing praise we're talking about something that is a function of your relationship with god you know you have to have your own experience of god that's where your praise comes from like the boy who you know for the first time touched fire and experienced the heat and the strength of fire from that day on 
his relationship with fire changed. He now knew fire as heart. So if he had to ever describe fire to anyone, he would say fire is heart. It's the same thing with you. Your, your praise always comes from your experience of God. Your acknowledgement of God always comes from your experience of him. If you have experienced God as shield, as shelter, that will be the essence of your praise because you are acknowledging him for who he is to you. Many people just echo what other people say about God. And when you look at what an echo is, an echo, right, just bounces around the whole place. It doesn't really penetrate. An echo, you know, uh, is is seemingly not real, not original. Why? Because that's the nature of an echo. And same thing, when you are praising God as a ritual, not from a relationship, you are no different from an echo. But nothing pleases God more than your acknowledgement of who he is to you. When you have a true relationship with God, you are able to praise him for who he is. You are able, like the man of God said in, in that First Chronicles 29 verse 13. He says, now therefore our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. That's it. When you know God for yourself, you can praise him, like I, like I like to say, from A to Z. You can call him Alpha, right? You can call him Blessed Savior. You can call him Covenant-keeping God. You can call him Deliverer. You can call him El Shaddai. You can call him Faithful Father. You can call him Great I Am. You can call him your Justifier. You can call him your King. You can call him your Lord. You can call him, you know, your Waymaker, your Mighty God, the never-changing change. You can call him promise keeper. You can call him your queen, your, 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 the one who never quits on you. You can call him omnipotent, incredible, invisible. You can call him Lord, shield, shelter, waymaker, promise keeper. Why? Because that has been your experience of him. That has been your experience of him. And when you do that, you are engaging in prevailing praise. And when you engage in prevailing praise, God is truly pleased with you hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 look at what the bible says so through jesus let us always offer to god our sacrifice of praise coming from lips that speak his name that's it coming from lips that speak his name the only way your lips can speak his name is going to be based on the relationship of your experience of him. So, I challenge you in this season to go deeper in your relationship with him. Know God for yourself. Don't let your knowledge and your relationship of God be what you have heard of him. Let it be of what you experience of him. Because God wants to hear you praise him and you cannot afford not to praise him because he gets his praise anyhow god doesn't joke with his praise why that's the environment in which he lives just like fish lives in water right birds in the air god lives in praise that's his habitat that's why in the book of uh, i believe it's uh, luke 19 Right? Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem and all the disciples there were praising him. They were blessing his name, giving him all the glory. And, you know, the monitoring spirit, like I call them, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, stop the disciples from, from saying such things about you. Stop them from praising you. And you know what Jesus told them? He said, if these disciples stop praising me, he said, even the stones will cry out and begin to praise me. Why? I get my praise anyhow. That's the environment in which I live. They will acknowledge me for who I am. So, the, the primary reason God made you, the, the, the reason God put you on this planet, the reason why you exist is to praise him, to acknowledge him for who he is. 
And the depth and the essence of it comes when you truly have a relationship with him. So let your praise come from a relationship, not from a ritual. And when you do that, you will experience what we truly call prevailing praise. Someone say amen to that. What is prevailing praise? Prevailing praise is not only acknowledging God for who he is, it's also access to God for his blessings to you. Prevailing praise is access to God for his blessings to you. I call it the way, the protocol of getting into God's presence. It's, you see, <laughs> there's a protocol for getting to God's presence. Yes, I agree. God is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. But it's not everywhere manifested. The way you get into his manifested presence is through prevailing praise. Look at it. Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. You enter into his courts with praise. That's the protocol. That's the access. I call it, I call it the key code, right? The, the, the key code, the passcode, the face ID that you need to get into his presence. See, just like, you know, your ATM machine or even your, your, your devices. For those of us that maybe use iPhone or some of the smart devices, you need some kind of a key code, some kind of a, a, a password or a face ID to get access into that device or into that machine. It's the same way prevailing praise is. It's the it's the access the protocol the face either the key code for you to get into god's presence to be able to experience the blessing he has for you that was the secret of the man david in the bible david was one who understood this in fact the bible calls it the key of david the key of david he was someone at a very tender age as a teenager you know alone in the wilderness with his father's sheep, he would just be praising and worshiping God and discovered, you know, that God loved to be wooed. God loved to be praised. God loved his singing and his worshiping and his prevailing praise. And something always happened anytime he praised God. He just knew that he experienced the enveloping presence of God all around him. And with that, he had this unusual boldness and strength to be able to go after the lion and the bear when they came after his father's sheep can you imagine that it will have been acceptable loss for him to run away when the lion and the bear came after his father's sheep but not with david because he had already found the secret he had found the key of getting access into god's presence so he always did that and he was one that experienced the manifested presence of god all around him right from the time he was a teenager that's why he never throughout his lifetime time lost the battle because he found the secret of getting access into god's manifested presence and with that he always enjoyed victory all the time the bible calls it the key of david that's why david could say that you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore psalm 16 verse 11 he knew that he knew that god inhabited the praises of his people why he discovered that the prevailing praise is access and the bible tells us that that's the key of david look at it in isaiah 22 verse 22 it says it there. Let me just show it to you to help you. Isaiah 22, verse 22. It says, The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulders, so he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. Can you imagine that? In other words, when you use the key of prevailing praise, you, God will open uncommon doors to you that no one can ever shut. God will open uncommon opportunities to you that no one can ever take away from you. Why? That's the access that we use to get into God's presence. We see that scripture again also in Revelations chapter 3, verse 7. 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, to let you know that this key is something that God even recognizes. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. Look at what it says. It says in verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? This thing says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. Can you see that? He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens so the key of david is prevailing praise that's the key it's the key that we use to access his presence so we can get the blessings he has for us so i'm telling you i'm challenging you that as from today don't take your praise for granted don't take prevailing praise for granted that's the access key that's the 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 password that's the face id to god's manifested presence and when you do that, he promises to release his, bl- his blessings in return. So when your praise, your prevailing praise is acceptable, God responds with his blessings. So it's not just praising anyhow now. Remember we said your praise can't be ritualistic. That would just be an echo. It must be out of a deep relationship. And you have to praise God to the degree in which it's acceptable. All right? When it's acceptable, he responds with blessings. And that blessing is what we need to get ahead in life. The blessing is what we need to grow and to enjoy the fullness of God's blessings. Look at it. Psalm 67, verse 5 through 7. Psalm 67, verse 5 through 7. I love that verse of scripture. Very, very powerful verse of scripture. Let me read it to you in the Passion translation of the Bible. Psalm 67, verse 5 through 7. Very powerful verse of scripture. Look at what it says. Psalm 67, verse 5 through 7. The scripture says, No wonder the people praise you. Let all the people praise you more. Why? The harvest of the earth is here. God, the very God we will worship, keeps us satisfied at his banquet of blessings. Now look at verse 7. It says, and the blessings keep coming. I prophesy over you, as you praise God, the blessings will keep coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, and the blessings keep coming. Then all the ends of the earth will give him the honor he deserves. And, the awe, and be in awe of him. Hallelujah. So here's the point I'm making to you. As you praise God, God will respond with his blessings. However, it must be acceptable praise. It's, the, it's when it's accepted that you get access. It's just like your, key, your password. If your password is 123, if you put 125, right? The, pa- the password is not accepted, so you won't get access. Same thing with prevailing praise, right? When you do it from the standpoint of relationship, it becomes accepted because it will be original, it will be real, it won't be an echo. And when it's accepted, God responds with his blessings. And as you enjoy his blessings, you will have a reason to even praise him more and you get access to more blessings and your life will will always be a blessed life. Someone say amen to that. I see that that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. So prevailing praise is acknowledging God for who he is. Prevailing praise is access to God for his blessings towards you. And finally, number three, prevailing praise is action that brings God to the scene in a crisis. I love that. Prevailing praise is action that brings God to the scene in a crisis. And we need that today more than ever before. Prevailing praise is not just acknowledgement. It's not just access. It's also action. It's something that you do. I say it's, it's what you do when you don't know what to do. When you're in a crisis. When you're between a rock and a hard place. When all the walls are falling down. Or on you when you're in a valley in life what do you do when you're in a deep hole and you can't get out what do you do well you do what right uh, uh, I call 
uh, prevailing praise, action, turning the situation around and focusing on God, praising him in the midst of your mess. And then he comes to turn the mess into a message. Praising him in the midst of your crisis. And he comes to come and crash everything that has held you bound. You know, praising him when everything seems hopeless. And he comes to come and turn it into an endless hope. Doing, right, what everybody says is impossible. Right, even in the midst of a crisis. Praising God, right? Praising God in the midst of crisis. So praise is action. We see this example in Acts chapter 16. The Bible tells us of Paul and Silas. They were in a very dire situation. They had gone just to minister the word of God. And they encountered this girl who was under the inspiration of a demonic spirit. Just, you know, uh, tormenting them and interfering with their ministry. And, you know, Paul, in his habit of not wanting anything to disrupt his ministry just turned and he cast out the evil spirit from the girl unfortunately the owner of the girl all right of the slave girl were using her to make money the moment she was delivered all the opportunity to make money ended so they were really upset with paul and silas and the bible tells us that that they took them you know to the city officials and Paul and Silas were incarcerated. They were put in prison in the deep dungeon, tied hand and foot, chained, right? Deep in the the dungeon. Now, if you are in that kind of a crisis, it's very easy to complain. If you're in that kind of crisis, it's very easy to murmur. You can say, Lord, but I was doing your business. Lord, but I was ministering the gospel. Lord, but I was obeying you. Why am I in this prison? Why am I experiencing this thing? But that's not what they did. They engaged prevailing praise, the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that in the midnight hour, look at it, Acts 16, 25 and 26. Acts 16, 25 and 26. Look at what these guys did in the middle of their mess. In the middle of the mess, the Bible says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26. And I said, suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's chains were loosed. Hallelujah. Can you see that? These guys engaged prevailing praise, right? They used the key code. They used the access key code. They used the right password. They used the right face ID, right? And it opened up their chains. It opened up their doors. And no one could shut it up. All their chains were loose. They were delivered and they were set free. So when you're in the valley, when you're in a crisis in life, confront it with prevailing praise. When you're in a crisis in life, whether personal crisis, whether national crisis, whether financial crisis, whether marital crisis, always confront it with prevailing praise. Why? That's the key code. But the key point that we're making here is this. It is action. The Bible tells us that they were singing. That's it. Praise is something you do. It's something you do. You do it, right, in action with your praise, with your song, with your words, with hymns. It's action. Praise is what I do, right? It's what I do when I don't know what to do. And the Bible says when you do that, God comes in and steps in into your situation. Listen, the purpose of prevailing praise is to bring God to the scene. (laughs) But the power of prevailing praise is God's manifested presence working in your situation. The purpose of prevailing praise is bringing God into your situation, but the power of your prevailing praise is God's manifested presence moving in your situation, opening the locked doors, breaking the chains, turning the captivity around in your favor, turning everything around for you. That's the power of prevailing praise. When you do that, I'm telling you, nothing will be impossible to you. There was another story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. A small nation 
of Judah was attacked by three mighty nations to crush them. And their king, King Jehoshaphat, he engaged prevailing praise. The Bible tells us that as they engaged in praise, that it brought God into the scene. And God sent ambushes against the three nations that had come against them. And they were soundly defeated. I prophesy over you that in this season of rejoicing, as you engage in prevailing praise, every opposition, every enemy will be soundly defeated on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. So I say it to you again, whenever you are faced with a crisis, a personal crisis, a national crisis, a financial crisis, a marital crisis, you must confront it with praise. I had a similar experience. I share my testimony with you. Right? right after, you know, I, I, I finished college, you know, then I was in the School of Architecture. And my whole schooling in trying to get my architecture degree took a whole of nine years. And at the very end, when I was supposed to graduate, I got a notification that I couldn't graduate because I was short two hours of uh, a critical course hours that I needed. Even though I had taken more, more uh, hours than, than required, I was told I couldn't graduate. That really put a damper on things. It would have been easy for me to complain. It would have been easy for me to, to murmur and be mad at God. After nine years, you're not going to let me graduate. I'm going to have to wait more, one more year. You know what I did? I went back home. I locked myself in the room, right? And I just turned on music, right? And I was just dancing all by myself. I was dancing all by myself. I was just praising God. I took my focus off the news. I took my focus off the crisis. And I was just focusing on God, praising him, worshiping him, dancing and rejoicing. And in the midst of my praise, in the midst of my worship, God spoke. God said, you won't have to fight this fight. I will fight for you. God said and, and literally gave me one simple instruction. And to cut the long story short, the whole thing changed in my favor. The same people that said I couldn't graduate came back and said, here's your diploma. And like I tell everyone, even since I got the diploma, I have not even opened it. It's just sitting down there in my, in my, in my study. But here's the key. It was prevailing praise that got me through. If I had not engaged in prevailing praise, in praising, in worshiping, in dancing all by myself, I probably would have had to spend an extra year just to get that diploma. I prophesy over you that as you engage in prevailing praise this season, God will turn things around in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. You know why it's so important? When you pray, you are informing God of your crisis. But when you praise, you are involving God in that crisis. And when God steps in, everything becomes settled in your behalf. So ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you. I challenge you that in this season, in this season, even though it's a time of crisis, I challenge you to get your praise on. I challenge you to acknowledge God for who he is. I challenge you to use that key to get access to God and to your blessings. I challenge you to put in the action of prevailing praise so that you can experience God like you have ever experienced him before in this season. I challenge you. Let's do it as, you know, as a team together. You know, seven minutes every day. Seven minutes, you know, for the, for, for the rest of this month. Just worship him just praise him just dance all by yourself take your focus of the problem take your focus of the crisis take your focus of the coronavirus take your focus of whatever the news is saying and let's focus and turn our praise to him and you can do it you know by yourself if you know songs write the list of songs down and just sing if you don't know songs just put on some uh, a couple of earbuds turn on youtube Turn on your smart device and just as you are listening to it, sing along, dance, you know. Don't miss out on the opportunity with praise. When you do that, I promise you, you'll be singing 
a new song. It will be a song of testimonies. It will be a song of breakthrough. It will be a song of God's mighty hand working on your behalf. And that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. You always win when you engage prevailing praise. And that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. So again, the instruction is this. Seven minutes every day for the rest of the month. Let's engage in prevailing praise. And I trust that once this lockdown is over, I'll be hearing sweet testimonies of what God has done in your life. And that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy over you. You will not have any reason to sorrow. You will not have any reason even to be sad anymore. God will turn your sorrow to joy. God will turn your sign into singing. He will turn your crisis, even things that you will give God praise for in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you receive that word this morning? I pray for you. You have a new song to sing in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, someone say amen to that. Well, let us end with a quick word of thanksgiving to our God for what he has ahead for us this month. And I especially want to thank God for those of you watching that don't have a personal relationship with God or you want to rededicate your life to God. Let me pray with you so that when you engage in this prevailing praise, you can truly get access into God's presence and enjoy the blessing that he has in store for you. So if you would like to, you know, God to forgive you of your sin, or you like to really dedicate your life to Christ, put your hand upon your chest. Let me pray for you right now. And say this prayer boldly, along with everyone watching with me. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus who died for me. Today, I confess my sins. I ask that you forgive me. I believe I'm born again. Say it out loud. I believe I'm born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me pray for you, Father. Thank you for the souls that you have drawn to yourself this morning, for those that are saying the prayer for the first time and those that are rededicating their lives. Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to them and give them the grace to engage in prevailing praise until they see you in glory. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. I leave you with this verse of scripture. In Isaiah 35 verse 10, the Bible says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. That's God's word for you this season. As you engage in prevailing praise, God will restore all your losses. God will turn your sorrow into joy. God will turn your sighing into rejoicing. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And someone said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for us to give. Let's go ahead and prepare our giving this morning. Uh, if we were meeting in our church services, we would have had to take, you know, uh, two offerings, one for our Thanksgiving and one for our regular offerings. But as you're led, let's just give cheerfully. Let's give bountifully uh, this morning. We know that we give to God because we love him and we give to God because we are obeying his command to give. Uh, in DIC Cyprus, giving electronically is the best way to give, which is the only way you can give uh, really uh, because we are in lockdown right now. Text the word give to 832 seven eight nine four nine four nine the information is on your screen or you can navigate to our website dicypress.org forward slash give and we're aware that some of you are watching on the device that you normally will give with so as soon as the service is over please make sure that you complete your giving you can do online banking using zelle use the church email address at admin at dicypress.org but if you still like to uh, write a check you can just go ahead and mail it to the address on your screen god bless you as you give all right if you are ready with our offerings let's go ahead lift up our devices that we're giving with this morning hallelujah lift it up high above your head as we present our gift to the our gifts to the father father we celebrate you for this privilege that we have to give we are giving in obedience to you we are giving because we love you
Command your blessing upon our seed. Command your blessing upon everyone that is given. And let our blessings never end. We give you all the praise. And the people of God said, Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go ahead and complete our giving. For those of you that need to do it once the broadcast is over, please don't forget to do it. As you do it, the Lord of heaven will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, someone say amen to that. Hallelujah. Please don't forget, seven minutes every day for the rest of this month. Let's engage in prevailing praise and let's, God, let's trust God to do amazing things in our lives. So shall it be to you in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy over you this week shall be a week of good news. It shall be a week of rejoicing. It shall be a week of uncommon blessings, uncommon favor. This week, God will open doors of opportunities to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace will speak for you. Favor will attend to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Someone say amen to that. Come on, let's say a person of dominion want to go. I'm a person of dominion. I live in dominion. Dominion over sin, sicknesses, diseases, oppression, poverty, and all the wickedness of the devil. I am an outstanding success. I'm a role model. I'm a pace setter. I'm born to win and born to reign. Hallelujah. Come on, let's share the grace in fellowship as loud as you can. Want to go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on. As our culture is, turn to your neighbor to the left to the right. Or if you're by yourself, put your hand upon your chest. Come on, say, I love you with the love of the Lord. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. As your pastor loves you, I truly love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you and see you next time.